to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. Stephen G. of Interiors by Stephen G. is with me today. Interiors by Stephen G. is one of South Florida's most prominent interior designer firms. Stephen leads a team of over 80 professionals, which include licensed interior designers who happen to be fluent in seven languages, interior design renderers, a full AutoCAD department, design assistants, an in-house marketing and PR department, as well as a full warehouse team with their own fleet of trucks. Their locations include a 100,000 square foot corporate office and showroom and the Now by Stephen G. Showroom. These are both located in Broward County. Today, we'll talk about how and why Stephen G. came to his decision to leave the first interior design firm he partnered with and how he launched his company based on the lessons learned there, as Stephen calls them, the negatives. Listen up, too, for the discussion on how he established his company and reputation with the luxury property developers in the South Florida region. It is a terrific example of gambling on yourself and of calculating the risk versus your return on investment. Before we get to the show, I want to remind you that if you are looking for a way to differentiate yourself as an interior designer, you might consider becoming a expert color strategist. Our show sponsor, Camp Chroma, has an online on-demand course for you. In Camp Chroma, you will learn a fresh, modern approach to color that is backed by science, and you will learn the newest expert color tools. Camp Chroma will also teach you how to leverage these exciting technologies to help you grow your interior design business, get the skills you need to be the go-to authority on color in your market. Go to campchroma.com to enroll now. Okay, I'm looking forward to introducing you to Stephen G. Hi, Stephen. Thank you so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Good morning, Luann, and thanks for having me. So, Stephen, you have a tremendous business there in South Florida. You have been in business for more than 35 years. And, of course, I've learned that you've been a designer for more than 45 years. And when I was researching you and learning about your company, there were several things that stuck out to me that could be the markers or the catalyst for such a long and successful career. And I like to talk about a couple of them with you and then get your observations on what you think and what you feel when you look back contributes to such a successful firm. So one of the things that I noticed is, is that you have a lot of collaborations and relationships with luxury, with the luxury real estate market in South Florida. I noticed in a lot, you have a lot of videos on your site and um, a lot of them are interviews with high level luxury realtors. And I I don't really know the terms, maybe they're brokers, maybe they're developers, but would you look and say that that's one of the things and is it a chicken or the egg? Did you intentionally build these collaborations, Stephen, or did they organically happen for you and your firm? I really think, Luann, it's a combination of both. Um, Starting in the industry and and being mentored by some great people um, and and watching, as we say, as the world turns Mm -hmm. and watching the South Florida luxury market um, move. And I use that word move because the South Florida luxury market has really never changed in a zillion years other than the fact there's more development, the prices are five or 10 times what they were many years ago. But at the end of the day, what I realized as a designer 
in spending time with people on custom homes, this is a career for the average housewife when you do a custom home. Mm. When you do a luxury condominium, that buyer, this is a third, fourth, fifth home. They want the ease um, and they want it sort of down and dirty. Mm. So I focused my career and my business on the luxury condominium market because I realized that the time it took me to complete what I would say is a single family home of substance, I could complete and design 10 luxury condominiums in the same time frame. So then, you know, step two was saying to myself, well, how do I reach the buyers? Um, and many people spend a lot of money on print advertising and many people spend a lot of money today on the internet and on and on and on. And I said, the best way is to be able to reach them where they could actually see, touch and feel my work in the flesh. So I started to market to the luxury high end developers, um, here in South Florida and started to do sales centers for new projects that had not yet been built. And many of them as a marketing tool, instead of doing expensive 3d videos would actually build the entire, one of the entire basic apartments within a sales center, or if not the entire apartment, let's say the living room, master bedroom, kitchen, and master bath. Um, and people would walk in and love the work. And of course, at that time, you know, a small brochure, a business card would be on a, on a, uh, on a table in the model. Thus people of interest started to call us. So with that in mind, we started to build a business. Um, as you know, Luann, the design world um, is a very passionate business. Mm -hmm. You have to love what you're doing and it really does consume your life because it has never been a nine to five job. It has never been a Monday through Friday job, at least not in my career. Mm. So um, to this day, I still work anywhere between 70 and 80 hours a week. You sound like me. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know, they, they say the toughest thing in life, Luann, is to climb the ladder of success. And I thought that was brutal. Um, but getting there and staying there, staying there. <laughs> is, is twice as hard. That's and right. as I tell my staff, uh, I'm not ready to give up the throne yet. Um, and I continue to dig deep and deeper to come up with new and fresh and different and be a little out of the box. As, as a designer, I've never, although people say, well, that's the Stephen G look, which I'm honored about. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, our work is so deep and mm -hmm. I have such a talented group of people here, but getting back to your question. So what transpired from the models, um, and the sales centers, is meeting owners of real estate companies, meeting real estate agents and brokers, and introducing myself and offering my service to their clients. So at the end of the day, it sort of started to, I'm gonna use the word blossom, mm. where the referrals started to come, and, and that was the beginning, and we were a small team at that, at that point. We were four people. Mm. And, and, you know, what I learned about the industry very early on, including my prior career in the business with another firm, I learned that you could be the greatest designer and the most talented person in the world. But if you can't implement, if you can't be structured, if you cannot stay on a schedule, you're going to crash and burn. Mm. You're, not, you're talking our language here. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what the client's going to never forget, no matter how much they might love their home or their condominium or their office or, or their business, is only one thing. You know, great designer, but they were five months behind schedule. Right, right. The butt. So, you don't want the right. butt. Exactly. So we've been really, Luann, blessed. I use the word blessed all the time and fortunate for two things. A, I never forgot where I came from. 
So I didn't become the nose in the air designer. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't become the unreachable designer. And I didn't forget to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm still running around in a pair of jeans and a shirt every day or 90% of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not in a position where I hold myself holier than thou. And I am thankful for every client that uses us and hires us. And I never forgot to say thank you when it was over. Right. So, you know, you, you, you can't lose humility, if you want to call it that. Um, and I still do what I do, Luann, because I still have this embedded in my brain and my heart because I love being creative. And at this stage, I love being creative with my team. Mm -hmm. That is unbelievable. Um, and we are not the clock watcher. Right. Um, so, so I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you about your team for sure, because it's over 80 people and that is something that we're going to need to talk about. But I want to ask you a little bit more about this early beginnings with creating these collaborations. So when you think back, Stephen, and you, I, I first of all, I, I just want to point out to the designers listening to us that what you started your answer to me with was you didn't say it in the words that we use on the podcast, but you said exactly what we say over and over on the podcast is that you figured out where your niche was going to be. You as a smart business person took a look and what you said was, okay, I can do one luxury 10, 20, 30,000 square foot home here for, like you said, a, a homeowner who this is their job for the next two years to design and decorate their home alongside of me. Or I can bang out 10 or 20 in the next, you know, six months or one year if I go to the luxury condo market. And so the lesson in there is that you made a decision in the beginning, your why, what were you going to do and what was going to be the direction of your firm? And you based it on a sound business principle of I can turn more over, still be doing beautiful design and still work in a nice luxury market, but this makes more business sense for me. And then, so you, you go full, full steam into that. My question is in the very beginning, when you were just a firm of four people and you we're breaking into that market. Stephen, did you have to at any point offer to design the sales center, the master bedroom, bath, and the living room, or the full on condo at reduced or no charge in order to get your foot in the door? Or were you able from the beginning to go in, pitch yourself, and then earn that project for a, for a fee? Luann, you're amazing. Um, <laughs> Because, because with, with my drive and, and the person that I am, I don't, I hate to lose <laughs> and, and I would have done anything to get my foot in the door. Right. 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 And, um, with all due respect, every developer, um, in the country is looking for a deal regardless how big or small. Right. Um, at least that's how it was for many years. And at times today, it's still the same way. If I, if I, today we're, we're such a powerhouse, Luann, that if I wanted the job bad enough and I don't want to lose, I'll walk into the developer and say, listen, I'll do your model and sales center for free. Okay, so even today, you might, if you see the recognize the trade off value of the the, the that property and the and the kind of client that that property is attracting and the potential for the business there, it's, it's you're looking at it as an investment, almost like a marketing expense. At, at the end of the day, Luann, here's what I say all the time because there are many decisions that I make that at some sometimes my my executive team says, "Are you sure we really want this?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I said, yeah. And I say, yeah, because I am at this point so well versed at judging the upside potential. Right. Um, and I look at the upside potential at half of what I think. So I'm not disappointed. Oh, okay. But you know, we're doing projects right now where we would have gone in and done a sales center and maybe a model and, 
we own all the product. Um, we have a contract. And my investment could have been a couple of hundred thousand dollars. My return is millions. Right. But so, so I just want to point that out because I think a lot of times – our younger colleagues that are starting out, or it even could be a, a designer that's listening that's been in business 15 years and has wanted to break into this market. There, we look on one hand, we're always encouraging and really pleading with designers to not undervalue their services, to not, you know, bill at four hours if you really worked nine hours and that stuff. But the thing is to understand the rub in when it is a marketing decision. And I love that you said that you always evaluated what would be the upside and then you brought it back by half before you made your decision. So if you thought that what you're saying in there, check me if I'm correct, what you're saying in there is you look at a particular high rise development and you look at it and you look at the the market value that it's going to be selling for you look at the clientele that it's attracting and you look at how many units and you say maybe you say to yourself okay there's 80 units let's say i got you know i i hit a home run and i got 30 of these units and each unit at this level i'm going to probably be able to charge x amount of fees earn x amount of dollars and let's just say i only got 15 of them is that a proper return on investment for doing what it's going to cost me and my company to outfit this this sales unit or this model in this apartment. And then when your answer is yes, boom. And now that becomes like a line item expense as opposed to I'm working for free, right? Am I am I hearing this right? You're you're right on the money. Okay. And, and even in the high-end world where we might invest a lot of dollars. Mhm. Mm the return or what I could say is your break even yes. is three or four projects in the building. Okay. So you don't even have to, you don't even have to like have these pie in the sky. Like I've got to get 20 or 30 units to make it worth my while now. And the thing is, Stephen, you're, you're a very smart business person. You're very smart in the real estate market. This, this, this um, model would work across whatever scale down you go. So you could be a designer in Pittsburgh and there could be a project going up that is 15 units and the selling price for these units are a hundred thousand each as opposed to a million each. But that means that the level of design required as far as the investment and the time to do it and the materials are also going to come all the way down. And if a designer could walk in and say to a developer, I, I'll do this. You, you, they, and you're, you have a showroom. So are, I, I was gonna, I'm going to ask a question within a question. Let me finish the first. So they can pitch and say, I, I'll do it for free. I, I, I just want to put my name in here. I want to show you and your clients what I'm capable of doing. And if they got two out of 30 of those units or one out of 15 of those units, it's going to pay them back. So now, 100%. yeah. So, okay, good. So now get me to the nitty gritty of, do you at least at this stage, you have a hundred thousand square foot showroom and we didn't even get to that yet. So you have a lot of product that you can move in. You have your own trucks. You have a fleet of trucks. There's a lot that we have to get to, but take it to a designer that maybe is back in the day, three or four people on their staff like you were. When you first said, I'll do this for you, I want to do this in exchange for the marketing here. Did you at least say to them, if I'm going to put, you know, furniture in here, maybe it, back in the day it came from room and board, I don't know. Do Did you at least say, you're paying for the materials, I'm just doing the design for free? Or did you actually go full on risk and bring all that materials in too? Okay. So <laughs> what what we did was we said to the developer, you know, we would like to select flooring. We would like to design the lighting. Okay. We would like to pick the paint colors. Okay. You deliver me the shell ready. I'm going to put in the window treatments, the patio furniture, the area rugs, the decorative lighting, the furniture, artwork, greenery, and accessories, but I own it. Okay. 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 So what transpires down the road is now the building is going up, okay, and the sales center has to be demolished. And many times the developers say, you know, let's move this into a unit that's not sold in the project. Right. And then it gets sold. And most of the time you recoup your money, but it's years down the road. Because from inception of sales center to development of a tower, 
is two to three years, sometimes four. Right. So at the end of the day, no matter how you twist or turn the coin, as long as your pocket and your heart and your head could stand the time, okay. you will reap the benefit. Okay. And there's always a possibility that eventually when it does make it to that actual model, that a homeowner comes along or a co prospect comes along and says, I'll just take that one furnished. Thank you. As it is just, you know, <laughs> move your sales material out and I'm going to put my toothbrush in. Right. Luann, that <laughs> happens in South Florida all the time right. because people have lived through, I'm going to say the design process. Right. Once, twice, three, yes. four. And they're like, time. it's beautiful. I'll take it. <laughs> right. You know what? This is no root canal. This is no permitting. Right. This is no downtime. Right. Move it in. I'm closing. I'm going to come in in three or four days and live in my unit. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I'm and I'm only going to spend, you know, five weeks cumulatively a year in this unit. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. okay. So there's a lot in there for us to really pick apart depending on, and I what I love is there's lessons there for every level of design firm that we are. So we could be a new baby design firm starting out with a little local project. And the idea and the lesson is to just, I would even say you could get very creative if you were a younger designer starting out. Stephen, you tell me what you think about this idea. And you, there's... Maybe it's a a builder has a street and he's got six lots and he's going to build six, you know, 4,000 square foot family homes on it or something. But he wants to do, like you said, the, the sales center. And um, you could even, if you don't have the wherewithal to fund the furniture and so forth, and maybe the builder is like, look, I was just going to paint the place and put the flooring and the hardscapes in. I wasn't going to decorate it. If you could sort of pitch them and go to some local retailers and ask them, I know for me, Stephen, I own a window treatment company and I do custom window treatments. I know that if a designer came to me and said, I have an opportunity to do a model and they're going to put up six, you know, single family homes, 4,000 square feet each, would you do the window treatments in this model. If I, every single person walks through, we tell them window works did the window treatments. And if I get a project, I'll do it with you. I'm like, heck yeah, I'm doing that. So you can get the cooperation of retailers in your area, furniture stores and so forth. If the builder doesn't have the budget for the finish and just the hardscapes. Do you agree with that little concept there? Luann to the, I'll use the word small firm or single practitioner. Mm -hmm. I would think it's a, great concept. I would think any retailer would love to partner up. Did I lose you, Louis? Nope, nope, yep. Nope. Okay. I'm here. I love it. <laughs> I would I would think any retailer would love to partner up and get the opportunity to to sell furniture to these buyers. Mm -hmm. But there's another way to to cut the cut the apple up a little bit. Okay. Go to your local vendors. In other words, Every designer has their window treatment company, right. yay, Luann. Right. Um, and um, in our case, many times we go to our vendors and trades who we do huge volume of business with. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I were to tell you what my annual sales as part of our business are for just window treatments, Luann, you'd probably pick yourself up and relocate. I know. I can imagine um, it. <laughs> I saw your website. Right. Um, <laughs> Thanks. So, so, so many times I'm not embarrassed to go to our trades right? and say, guys, this is on your nickel. That's right. Lu Luann, you're putting in these window treatments. Bob, you're hanging that wall covering. Um, Alan, you're putting in the mirrors um, and on and on and on. Because for us, they have been with us for so many years mm -hmm they know the return from our models. Absolutely. Right. Because but I, I just think yeah. that it's it's important to always bring out that that there are there are, are it's a diff there's a difference between working for free because you have not stood and explained and owned what your fees are or what your your you should be paid and making a calculated decision that is essentially a, a marketing expense so i i thank you for going down that whole line of questioning with me and for being you know upfront and explaining it with us i want to talk to you Stephen, about 
this we you know you 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 leave the other firm that you were with you were a partner um you said to me that you were a partner in that firm you leave that firm you I want to bring up something you said off air. You said that you decided to leave the firm that you were with for 10 years because you looked and could see that they looked like they were going to ultimately crash and burn. And then you said to me that they did. Tell me, what did you see? Why did you believe it to be so? What was going wrong there that you could identify? And you were like, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, it's not the way to do it. I'm getting out of here and doing it on my own. Okay. So... I was um, 29 years old. I had been with the firm since I was 19. Um, I had become a minority stockholder. Mm -hmm. And as the years went on and the business started to grow, ownership, I watched the greed factor check in, as I call it, the greed factor. Mm. You know, in the world of business, Luann, whether you're a designer or a dressmaker, profit is not a dirty word. Right. But abusive Mm -hmm. numbers, because you're saying to yourself, well, this is one shot. Let me hit him over the head, get as much money as I can from them and move on. Mm. To me was a bad, bad place. Mm. Because believing, and if any designer is listening, referrals and people talking in a positive way about you or your firm is key very, very key to your success. And, and um, I believe that if you could run a 95 to 96% ratio of happy clients, you will become a superstar. Mm. Because there are always, and I don't care what anybody says, I don't care the location they live in, where they're from, there are always people that you can do everything right across the board but they're miserable people (laughs) and they're unhappy with their lives and they're never going to be happy. Hopefully that's a 3%, right? (laughs) Um, And it's just the, yes, that's the nature of any business, you know, whether you're going in and buy a TV and the woman says, well, they told me they'd be here at two and they didn't show up till the next morning at eight. There are people like that in the world. But at the end of the day, if you work hard and you stay in touch and you have constant contact and the client's not calling you every day and you're calling the client every day with an update um, and you're on top of your game, you will ultimately be successful. Mm -hmm. So what you're Um, describing in there is that the original firm that you were with, they didn't take the 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 long look on business and say let's build relationships with our clients and let's sell to these clients with this home and that home and this vacation home and this project and let them refer us because they're satisfied and we've treated them fairly to their friends and neighbors they were like going for the one hit wonder every time they were slamming it being greedy about it and not looking at the long game of how relationships really sustain and referrals really sustain your business you know, you 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 took the words right out of my mouth because I was going to say one hit wonders, but ah. as I as I opted to make the decision to leave, um, I also was very savvy about the negatives. Meaning, when I started my company, I didn't build the company on positives. I built it on negatives. I actually sat down with a pad and pen and I said, what are the negatives that I hear from people all the time? Mm. So here's what I would always hear. Number one complaint from any client is on time delivery. You could, you could speak to a hundred people who've used designers and out of the hundred, 95 will hit that item as number one. Mm. Number two, it takes two or three days to get a call back. Number three, um, when I had questions, um, they were never answered properly or one of the assistants would answer the design question rather than my designer. Mm. So I kept going down that list and you know, the hot buttons as I call them were 20 items, give or take. So when I started to build the company, I built it on those negatives and it was super successful for me 
because my business card for almost 35 years has my cell number mm. and I am reachable seven days and seven nights a week. You send me an email or a text unless I'm sound asleep, but I wake at four in the morning. So I'm replying to emails from 10 or 11 o'clock at night at four in the morning and people are replying, what are you doing up? Exactly. So, so <laughs> because, you know, the more that sits on a desk, as it relates to messages or the more that sits on your computer, when you can get them out of the way, why let them sit? Hmm. So, know. you know, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, Luann, <laughs> so, are my window treatments coming Thursday? I, I yeah, I Thursday, gotta tell Luana. you, you text me at four in the morning with that question. You're not getting an answer from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, oh God! Luann. We have a lot of similarities. Our business is thirty-six years old, as you know, as well, and we have a lot of similarities. But I have to say, I, I just there has to be boundaries. And the thing for me, Stephen, it's not that I'm probably not working on Saturday or Sunday. Ninety-nine percent of the Saturdays and Sunday during the year, I am working. But it just. It, for me, it's my time to work and complete something and move on and go to the next thing. Whereas as soon as you interact with the outside world on that, now it it's a back and forth and it's this and that. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I got one thing done instead of five. So, <laughs> Listen, if you don't think, Luann, that over many years mm -hmm. I have asked myself, have I done it right or <laughs> have I done it wrong? Yeah. You know, well, I you got to do what's that. right for you, you know? I, yeah, I struggle with it many times. You know, I, I wasn't really around much when my daughter grew up because I have started to build the business. Mm. And and believe me, you know, you, you, you live to regret some of it. But at mm. the end of the day, um, it allowed me to get to a place where life became... Um, a beautiful thing and a beautiful place. Mm, yeah. um, because, well, you put the hard you know, work in coming up. Yeah. Yep. At the end of the day, how many people strive and work hard to be successful in any career and don't get there? Right. I'm, I'm, um, so, you know, what I'm trying to tell, you know, a young designer is, um, you know, there's a commercial, you know, that the army is, is not a job, but it's a career <laughs> or something like that. The interior design is, a full-time and I mean full-time career yes. yes there's no question and and you know I still as the owner of a of a big place I still on a weekly weekly scenario visit jobs all the time um, I want to make sure that the quality is there I want to make sure that the vision is there I don't wait till the job is being delivered Right. I visit always. I start my day. I wake every day, unfortunately, Luann at 4 a.m. I shower, I get ready, and I'm the first person at Dunkin' Donuts door at 5 a.m. <laughs> to get my coffee. And I'm on the road at 5 o'clock. Yeah. And whether I come to the gallery in the showroom or I visit sites, it depends on the day and what my schedule is and, you know, what appointments. But you, you have got to... I'm going to say what I consider to be the best verbiage that I can give any young designer that is passionate. Create your own destiny. Mm. Right. That's the best thing I could say. Don't leave it in the hands of others. Right, right, right. You well, and it's, it's, you have to do it based on the things that you have been describing. It can't, it's not, the thing about it is, is, Create your own destiny is so true, but I feel like sometimes younger entrepreneurs t take it as, you know, oh, just like a poster on a wall, create your own destiny. But creating your own destiny really is looking back at the conversation that you just had with us. It's deciding from a business standpoint, is it more profitable, more productive, more efficient for me to do, you know, three 20,000 square foot homes every two years or 40 condominiums every two years? Is it more productive, more efficient for me to ask and ask and bang on doors for two years and maybe I'll find a developer that will see the vision and pay for our model unit to be designed? Or do I just bite the bullet and make the investment and pay for it and 
line it up as marketing. And then I love the other thing where you built your company on the negatives of actually listing. We all know what they are. I think it's great that you, that you, that you came up with a list of 20 and then made a decision that your company would address these negatives, that your company, these would be the things that are the non-negotiables in your company because how else, how better to set yourself apart? So yeah, create your destiny is not just a poster on the wall. It's actually doing the things that you have done. Let me say this. As a, as a parting word, Luann, for the young designer, first of all, I am very reachable for them that are listening. Oh, that's nice. Um, I will have as much conversation as anybody would like to have. <laughs> you you am, might be surprised. That's <laughs> okay, Luann, you. <laughs> you don't scare me, honey. Not me, so, but there's thousands of them out there listening to Listen, <laughs> come on, group. I'm, I'm a wealth of knowledge, and, and I love love to be able to help young and budding uh, professionals mm. because I have a lot to offer. But, you know, in, in a sense, you, you, you not only need to have a vision of today, Luann. Yes. I have planned this business from day one, mm. two, and three years down the road from my inception of Interiors by Stephen G. And, you know, that's a tough stick to wave if you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. but you you need to always think ahead of the game mm -hmm. always um, and if you're only thinking about today don't be surprised if you'll be find yourself working for somebody in a year or a year and a half from now right because you really do have to set yourself up and and think and that's what I was you know starting to say I just love that from even the time that you were a young designer working for another firm, you weren't just head down doing your work. You were looking around and thinking and, you know, with the ramifications of not building relationships and you saw the firm, the mistakes the firm was making and to have the vision to say, you know, there's a way to do this that's right and I'm committed to it and I'm going to go out and I'm going to do it on my own. And everything you've done supports this vision that you've got for yourself and your, your company and clearly with the success that you have that – um, it's probably an amazing place to work, to be creative. And I really have to suggest everyone take the time to go to the website, Interiors by Stephen G. The work is unbelievable. It is phenomenal. The, the, these homes, these condos, these commercial places that you've designed and your team has designed, Stephen, are, are, are just outstanding. The body of work oh, on Luann, the website is you. unbelievable. <laughs> so. and, and you know something, Luann, um, I'm going to just say one last thing. First of all, other than thank you for your time. Um, designers, stay focused, stay grounded, never become bigger than the shoes you're standing in. Mm, love it. I love it. Thank you so much. You're really an amazing man, and I really admire you and what you've created. And I thank you so much for spending your time with us today, Stephen. Luann, a pleasure. Okay, so the number one thing that I would love for you to take away from the show is the understanding of how Stephen built a reputation for himself and his firm in the South Florida area as the go-to firm for luxury interior design at the most prestigious high-rise condom condominium developments. Did you hear it? It wasn't lucky. It wasn't I knew a guy who knew a guy who introduced me to a guy. It wasn't that. No, Stephen looked at an opportunity that was there and he determined as costly as it was to pay up front for all of the furnishings, accessories, lug, rugs, lighting, and art to outfit a sales office or a model apartment. He gambled it would pay off. He specifically described how he evaluates what the potential upside of an opportunity might be. Then he halves that. And if it's still a profit maker, then he goes for it. And in this case, he was exactly right. And all these many years later, it not only has been an insane profit maker for him and his firm, but those early initial deals became the foundation of the business and the reputation that he and his company now have. They have established a niche for themselves in the design property development community in South Florida. Okay. And this brings business through the door every day. And of course, course, like we always say about niching, the clients come through the door from that 
specialty. But then the client that came through the door that has that condo in the high rise also has an apartment in New York City or has an apartment in, you know, Brazil for crying out loud, right? So it's the way in, but then it grows the firm exponentially. All right. I want you to think about how can you apply this concept to your business, your business. Now, am I standing here saying, hey, take out a loan for 40 grand and offer to do the next model home in your town? And oh, no, I am not. <laughs> okay. I am not. All right. But think about it. How can you just apply this idea on a level that you could handle in your firm, a level that does not put your finances in jeopardy? Okay. Could could you connect with a builder and make an arrangement that you will do just the design services for his next project at no charge or at half your normal rate? And then when that home sells faster and more efficiently at a higher rate for him, you tell him, then the next time around, we do it at my going rate. Okay. So there's all types of ways to tweak this. I would love to know if it gets your brain going and um, if you've gotten an aha moment and what you're going to do with it. Okay. From this. All right. Other things that we've talked about throughout the years on the show are about offering consultations for free as gifts to your local charity events, to their auctions, to their tricky tray events, right? These are places where people that have disposable income that are accustomed to hiring interior designers are at. And so by giving a free consultation, then who knows, maybe they hire you for the execution of a project, all right? The idea is to get your foot in the door to show your value. So then you can turn around and charge for your value. Okay. Now, one thing is, please don't confuse this working for free with doing free work. Okay. For, with doing unbilled hour, hours for a current client. Okay. I'm not an advocate of that. And you know that what Stephen G did and what I'm suggesting that you figure out a way to do is marketing. Okay. Not billing for your full hours on a current client is as my friend Sandra Funk at House of Funk says is not standing in your space. All right. So there's a very big distinction between making a decision to make an investment of your time, energy, sometimes money in order for a return than working for free inside of an agreement that a client is outside of. Okay. Make sense. All right. Now I have to just run down <laughs> the 9,000 places that we have an opportunity to see and meet each other in person for this month of May, 2018. First of all, this week, if you are in New Jersey, in New York, please come on Thursday the 17th to Montclair, New Jersey for the Designers Empowerment Br Brunch with Blanche Garcia. Okay, I will be there speaking with Blanche. On Sunday the 20th, I will be at New in New York City at Wanted Design. I'll be on a panel talking about how to profitably run a creative business. This panel is going to be moderated by Verona Eagleson, the founder of Modanus, and it is co-hosted by Design Milk and Modanus. Monday, 20 21st of May, Nancy G, Nancy Ganzikalfer will be at Window Works for our Lunch and Learn. So please come in person, get the Eventbrite link, or watch us on Facebook Live, okay? Tuesday, May 22nd, I will be at Lafroy Brooks at the A&D building. This is the uptown location, not the one downtown, from 6 o'clock to 8 p.m. We're going to have a little conversation there about running a profitable firm, and then we will have a book signing and some networking and getting to know each other. Okay, information... RSVP links, all of these things can be found on my website, Luann Nigara.com. Just go over to the website, go to attend a live event page. Okay. Love, love, love to meet you in person. Okay. Keep in mind, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, please reach out to me at info at .com. We can set up a 20 minute call to see if what you need is what I can give you. All right. Because, you know, I'm only interested in working with you if I really think that I'm the lady to help you. Okay. So that is it for today. Go out, be profitable and make a decision to do one thing to improve your business today. All right. Do that for me. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks.com.
windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land and where I'm going to be, all of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.